Unfree labor is a generic or collective term for those work relations, especially in modern or early modern history, in which people are employed against their will with the threat of destitution, detention, violence including death, compulsion, or other forms of extreme hardship to themselves or members of their families. Unfree labor includes all forms of slavery, and related institutions e.g. debt slavery, serfdom, corvée and labor camps. Many of these forms of work may be covered by the term forced labor, which is defined by the International Labor Organization ILO, as all involuntary work or service exacted under the menace of a penalty. However, under the ILO Forced Labor Convention of 1930, the term forced or compulsory labor shall not include any work or service exacted in virtue of compulsory military service laws for work of a purely military character, any work or service which forms part of the normal civic obligations of the citizens of a fully self-governing country. Any work or service exacted from any person as a consequence of a conviction in a court of law, provided that the said work or service is carried out under the supervision and control of a public authority and that the said person is not hired to or placed at the disposal of private individuals, companies or associations requiring that prison farms no longer do convict leasing. Any work or service exacted in cases of emergency, that is to say, in the event of war, of a calamity or threatened calamity, such as fire, flood, famine, earthquake, violent epidemic or epizootic diseases, invasion by, animal, insect or vegetable pests, and in general any circumstance that would endanger the existence or the well-being of the whole or part of the population. Minor communal services of a kind which, being performed by the members of the community in the direct interest of the said community, can therefore be considered as normal civic obligations incumbent upon the members of the community, provided that the members of the community or their direct representatives shall have the right to be consulted in regard to the need for such services. Topic. Payment for unfree labor If payment occurs, it may be in one or more of the following forms. The payment does not exceed subsistence or barely exceeds it. The payment is in goods which are not desirable and or cannot be exchanged or are difficult to exchange, or the payment wholly or mostly consists of cancellation of a debt or liability that was itself coerced, or belongs to someone else. Unfree labor is often more easily instituted and enforced on migrant workers, who have traveled far from their homelands and who are easily identified because of their physical, ethnic, linguistic, or cultural differences from the general population, since they are unable or unlikely to report their conditions to the authorities. According to the Marxian economics, under capitalism, workers never keep all of the wealth they create, as some of it goes to the profit of capitalists. By contrast with modern subjective theory of value as used by neoclassical economists, the wages offered necessarily represent the marginal utility of the labor, and any profit or loss is also due to other inputs provided, such as capital, time value of money, or risk. The present situation Unfree labor re-emerged as an issue in the debate about rural development during the years following the end of the Second World War, when a political concern of Keynesian theory was not just economic reconstruction mainly in Europe and Asia, but also planning in the Third World. A crucial aspect of the ensuing discussion concerned the extent to which different relational forms constituted obstacles to capitalist development, and why. During the 1960s and 1970s unfree labor was regarded as incompatible with capitalist accumulation, and thus an obstacle to economic growth, an interpretation advanced by exponents of the then-dominant semi-feudal thesis. From the 1980s onwards, however, another and very different Marxist view emerged, arguing that evidence from Latin America and India suggested agribusiness enterprises, commercial farmers and rich peasants reproduced, introduced or reintroduced unfree relations. However, recent contributions to this debate have attempted to exclude Marxism from the discussion. These contributions maintain that, because Marxist theory failed to understand the centrality of unfreedom to modern capitalism, a new explanation of this link is needed. 
This claim has been questioned by Tom Brass 2014, Debating Capitalist Dynamics and Unfree Labor, A Missing Link, The Journal of Development Studies, 50-4, 570-282. He argues that many of these new characteristics are in fact no different from those identified earlier by Marxist theory and that the exclusion of the latter approach from the debate is thus unwarranted. The International Labour Organization ILO, estimates that at least 12.3 million people are victims of forced labour worldwide, of these, 9.8 million are exploited by private agents and more than 2.4 million are trafficked. Other 2.5 million are forced to work by the state or by rebel military groups. From an international law perspective, countries that allow forced labor are violating international labor standards as set forth in the Abolition of Forced Labor Convention C-105, one of the fundamental conventions of the ILO. According to the ILO Special Action Program to Combat Forced Labor SAPFL, global profits from forced trafficked labor exploited by private agents are estimated at $44.3 billion per year. About 70% of this value, $31.6 billion, come from trafficked victims. At least the half of this sum, more than $15 billion, comes from industrialized countries. Topic. Trafficking Trafficking is a term to define the recruiting, harboring, obtaining and transportation of a person by use of force, fraud, or coercion for the purpose of subjecting them to involuntary acts, such as acts related to commercial sexual exploitation including forced prostitution or involuntary labor. Topic. Forms. Topic. Slavery The archetypal and best-known form of unfree labor is chattel slavery, in which individual workers are legally owned throughout their lives, and may be bought, sold or otherwise exchanged by owners, while never or rarely receiving any personal benefit from their labor. Slavery was common in many ancient societies, including ancient Egypt, Babylon, Persia, ancient Greece, Rome, ancient Israel, ancient China, classical Arab states, as well as many societies in Africa and the Americas. Being sold into slavery was a common fate of populations conquered in wars. Perhaps the most prominent example of chattel slavery was the enslavement of many millions of black people in Africa, as well as their forced transplantation to the Americas, Asia or, in much smaller numbers, Europe, where their status as slaves was usually inherited by their descendants. The term slavery is often applied to situations which do not meet the above definitions, but which are other, closely related forms of unfree labor, such as debt slavery or debt bondage although not all repayment of debts through labor constitutes unfree labor. Examples are the repartimiento system in the Spanish Empire, or the work of indigenous Australians in northern Australia on sheep or cattle stations ranches, from the mid-19th to the mid-20th century. In the latter case, workers were rarely or never paid, and were restricted by regulations and or police intervention to regions around their places of work. In late 16th century Japan, unfree labor, or slavery was officially banned, but forms of contract and indentured labor persisted alongside the period penal codes forced labor. Somewhat later, the Edo period penal laws prescribed non-free labor. For the immediate family of executed criminals in Article 17 of the Gotok Reho Tokugawa House Laws, but the practice never became common. The 1711 Gotok Reho was compiled from over 600 statutes promulgated between 1597 and 1696, according to Kevin Bales, in Disposable People, New Slavery in the Global Economy 1999, there are now an estimated 27 million slaves in the world. Topic. Truck system A truck system, in the specific sense in which the term is used by labor historians, refers to an unpopular or even exploitative form of payment associated with small, isolated and or rural communities, in which workers or self-employed small producers are paid in either, goods, a form of payment known as truck wages, or tokens, private currency, scrip. 
or direct credit, to be used at a company store, owned by their employers. A specific kind of truck system, in which credit advances are made against future work, is known in the U.S. as debt bondage. Many scholars have suggested that employers use such systems to exploit workers and or indebt them. This could occur, for example, if employers were able to pay workers with goods which had a market value below the level of subsistence, or by selling items to workers at inflated prices. Others argue that truck wages, at least in some cases, were a convenient way for isolated communities to operate. When official currency was scarce, by the early 20th century, truck systems were widely seen, in industrialized countries, as exploitative. Perhaps the most well known example of this view was a 1947 U.S. hit song, 16 Tons. Many countries have Truck Act legislation that outlaws truck systems and requires payment in cash. Topic. Mandatory services due to social status Topic. Corvée Though most closely associated with medieval Europe, governments throughout human history have imposed regular short stints of unpaid labor upon lower social classes. These might be annual obligations of a few weeks or something similarly regular that lasted for the laborer's entire working life. As the system developed in the Philippines and elsewhere, the laborer could pay an appropriate fee and be exempted from the obligation. Veti Chikiri In Veti Chikiri and bigger lower castes have only had obligations or duties to render free services to the upper caste community also called as Veti or Veti Chikiri. Topic. Conscription Topic. Conscription for military and security forces Beside the conscription for military services, some countries draft citizens for paramilitary or security forces, like internal troops, border guards or police forces. While sometimes paid, conscripts are not free to decline enlistment. Draft dodging or desertion are often met with severe punishment. Even in countries which prohibit other forms of unfree labor, conscription is generally justified as being necessary in the national interest and therefore it is not contrary to the exceptions of the Forced Labor Convention, signed by the most countries in the world. Topic. Conscription for community services and fire services During the Cold War in some communist countries like Czechoslovakia, the German Democratic Republic or the Soviet Union the originally voluntary work on Saturday for the community called Sabotnik, Voskresnik or AKCEZ became de facto obligatory for the members of a community. In theory in some German states it is feasible for communities to draft citizens for public services, called hand and tension services. This mandatory service has not been executed since World War II, if at all, this obligatory service only will be executed during or after a severe disaster. In Switzerland in most communities all inhabitants, no matter if they are Swiss or not, have to join the so-called militia fire brigades. Conscripts in Singapore are providing the personnel of the country's fire service as part of the national service in the civil defense force. In Austria and Germany citizens have to join a compulsory fire brigade if a volunteer fire service cannot be provided, due to lack of volunteers. In 2018 this regulation is executed only in a handful of communities in Germany and currently in none community in Austria. Topic. Civil conscription Some countries practice forms of conscription for public works for different occupational groups or groups of people under different denominations like civil conscription, civil mobilization, political mobilization etc. In history this obligatory services have been implemented due to long-lasting labor strikes or economic crisis, to provide basic services like medical care or food supply. 
In Australia discussions about implementing civil conscription for unemployed persons were held during an election campaign in the 1990s, in Belgium in 1964, in Portugal and in Greece from 2010 to 2014 due to the severe economic crisis, a system of civil mobilisation was implemented to provide public services as a national interest. In Greece these obligatory services have been called political mobilisation and civil conscription. Topic. Penal labor Topic. Labor camps Another historically significant example of forced labor was that of political prisoners, people from conquered or occupied countries, members of persecuted minorities, and prisoners of war, especially during the 20th century. The best known example of this are the concentration camp system run by Nazi Germany in Europe during World War II, the Gulag camps run by the Soviet Union, and the forced labor used by the military of the Empire of Japan, especially during the Pacific War such as the Burma Railway. Roughly four million German POWs were used as reparations labor. By the Allies for several years after the German surrender, this was permitted under the Third Geneva Convention provided they were accorded proper treatment. China's Laogai labor reform system and North Korea's Kualiso camps are current examples. About 12 million forced laborers, most of whom were Poles and Soviet citizens Ostarbeiter, were employed in the German war economy inside Nazi Germany. More than 2,000 German companies profited from slave labor during the Nazi era, including Daimler, Deutsche Bank, Siemens, Volkswagen, Hoechst, Dresner Bank, Krupp, Allianz, BASF, Bayer, BMW, and Degusa. In Asia, according to a joint study of historians featuring Jufun Ju, Mark Petey, Toru Kubo, and Mitsuyoshi Himeta, more than 10 million Chinese were mobilized by the Japanese army and enslaved by the Koa in for slave labor in Manchukuo and North China. China. The U.S. Library of Congress estimates that in Java, between 4 and 10 million Ramusha Japanese manual laborer were forced to work by the Japanese military. About 270,000 of these Javanese laborers were sent to other Japanese-held areas in Southeast Asia. Only 52,000 were repatriated to Java, meaning that there was a death rate of 80%. Kerja Rodi was the term for forced labor in Indonesia during Dutch colonization. The Khmer Rouge attempted to turn Cambodia into a classless society by depopulating cities and forcing the urban population, new people, into agricultural communes. The entire population was forced to become farmers in labor camps. Topic. Prison labor Convict or prison labor is another classic form of unfree labor. The forced labor of convicts has often been regarded with lack of sympathy, because of the social stigma attached to people regarded as common criminals. In some countries and historical periods, however, prison labor has been forced upon people who have been victims of prejudice, convicted of political crimes, convicted of victimless crimes or people who committed theft or related offenses because they lacked any other means of subsistence categories of people who typically call for compassion according to current ethical ideas three british colonies in australia new south wales van diemen's land tasmania and western australia are three examples of the state use of convict labor Australia received thousands of convict labourers in the 18th and 19th centuries who were given sentences for crimes ranging from those now considered to be minor misdemeanours to such serious offences as murder, rape and incest. A considerable number of Irish convicts were sentenced to transportation for treason while fighting for Irish independence from British rule. More than 165,000 convicts were transported to Australian colonies from 1788 to 1868. Most British or Irish convicts who were sentenced to transportation, however, completed their sentences in British jails and were not transported at all. It is estimated that in the last 50 years more than 50 million people have been sent to Chinese Laogai camps. Topic. Indentured and bonded labor 
A more common form in modern society is indenture, or bonded labor, under which workers sign contracts to work for a specific period of time, for which they are paid only with accommodation and sustenance, or these essentials in addition to limited benefits such as cancellation of a debt, or transportation to a desired country. International conventions ILO Forced Labor Convention, 1930 No. 29 ILO Abolition of Forced Labor Convention, 1957 No. 105 ILO Minimum Age Convention, 1973 No. 138 Worst Forms of Child Labor Convention, 1999 No. 182 Topic. See also Action Z Bevan Boys Construction Soldier Employee Abuse Debt Bondage Exploitation Forced Labor in Germany during World War II Forced Labor of Germans after World War II Forced Prostitution Involuntary Servitude Labor trafficking in the United States List of concentration and internment camps Refusal of work SAPFL, the ILO Special Action Program to Combat Forced Labor Sexual Slavery Shanghai verb. Subotnik Sweatshop Trafficking in human beings Trafficking of children Wage slavery Workfare Workhouse equals equals notes.